In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Nick Tim and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friends. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to the program in the last days. And today we have Eliezer Ben Yehuda again. He's a dear friend and we're walking step by step to see what's happening in the scriptures. And we will speak also about my book, which is about the beauty of the Hebrew language. So Eliezer, shalom again. Shalom, how are shalom. you? Fine, thank so you. So nice to be with all of your listeners yes. and with you and to share with you the common faith that we have in our Father, Amen. and especially in His place yes. in, in Jerusalem. It's, yes, it's wonderful to be able to be here and with you. And like now we've been here for we're in our third year, and we've learned so much being in the land. There is no other place really to learn things. And we're rediscovering the scriptures, and we're discovering the Hebrew language, and we're discovering Him because of all of that. Absolutely. And I was saying uh, we have more questions in one way, but we are stronger in our faith in the other side, which is And you wonderful. have some answers and I have some that answers. you didn't have yes. before. Yes, yes. So very this is the wonderful answer. thing, yes. and I'm very happy to see that happening. Mm -hmm. And I am, you know, from my place as a, a Jewish person, as a rabbi in Judaism, I firmly believe that we belong to one faith community, the Judeo-Christian uh, faith community, and that we need to uh, celebrate what we have together mm -hmm. and uh, keep to ourselves what we have that is uniquely ours. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. It's wonderful. So tell us a bit more, I mean, like, I've told you about the book that I wrote, and I think I, I pray that it will be like an introduction for people. So tell me a bit what you think about it. Well, I read your book. I was very happy that you sent it to me so that I could read it. And I read it, and uh, I told you before we went on air mm -hmm. that it's a lovely book, and that I was very pleased to uh, receive it and to read it. But I think that you have opened a window mm -hmm. for Christian people to see a blink of an eye mm -hmm. of what Hebrew is. And at the same time, I think that it is very important for Jewish people and for Christian people mm -hmm. to learn what I call the Hebrew scriptures in the Hebrew. You know, a classical book, whether you're talking about Shakespeare, whether you're talking about Molière, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about Chekhov, mm -hmm. or whether you're talking about Tanakh, which is our name for our Hebrew scriptures, mm -hmm. Torah, Nevi'im, Ketubim. That's it. The five books of Moses, mm -hmm. the books of the prophets, mm -hmm. and the writings. That's it. So, that's so these Tanakh. three, the initials of the three words, mm -hmm. make up the word Tanakh. And so we called it the Tanakh, or in English, I call it the Hebrew Scriptures. And anybody who thinks that they can read a translation and get the full meaning Mm. of uh, what the Hebrew scriptures are, uh, they should try to uh, take a shower uh, wearing a, uh, um, a raincoat. Oh, yeah. A raincoat. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to get too wet. No. They'll get uncomfortable, but they're not going to get too wet, and they're certainly not going to get clean. Mm -hmm. You see, so if you want to learn the roots of Christianity, the roots of Christianity are found in the Hebrew Scriptures. And this is very true because, friends, I start to read slowly, slowly my Hebrew, my, my uh, Tenach, the, the Hebrew Scriptures, in Hebrew, obviously. And it's another book. 
is another Absolutely. book. It's another book yes. and it goes to your face straight. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and a lot, I don't know what, and if we can put it under anti-Semitism, but there is a lot of things that suddenly I realize and said, this is not, the connection is not what was written in my Old Testament mm -hmm. in, in English or in French. I can't remember now, I read usually in English. And when I read it in Hebrew and I have the two together and I go like slowly, slowly, it's like, this is not the same. And, Indeed. and it's so important that we relearn this thing. And we, we have lots of work to do and a lot of studies. And, yes. You yes. know, relearn and learn and relearn mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very interesting that you, in your book, you know, you speak not only about the letters mm -hmm. and the name of the letters, mm -hmm. but also the, um, the numerical value of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, letters. Mm -hmm. And you mention the fact that, uh, that the Aleph, the mm -hmm. first letter of the alphabet, uh, you know, is the letter that has the value of one, mm -hmm. and it is the first letter of the word El, mm -hmm. or Elohim, mm -hmm. or even Adonai, which means the Lord in Hebrew. You see, mm -hmm. it's usually translated yeah. that way, you know. And uh, uh, the last letter, you know, Alpha Omega, mm -hmm. we have in Hebrew Aleph and Taf. Mm -hmm. So we always say, just like the Greek said, from Alpha, um, Alpha Omega means, you know, from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. So, me Aleph Ad Taf, mm -hmm. from Aleph to Taf means to know everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the arguments in the Hebrew mm -hmm. is that you can never know everything. Very me true. Aleph Ad Taf. <laughs> it Very is, true. No matter what a wonderful student you are, you will never know everything Me Aleph Ad Taf. And so, oh. They say that the Hebrew scriptures begin with the second letter of the alphabet, bet, bet bereshit. Mm -hmm. Why does it begin with a bet? So that nobody can say, oh, I know the scriptures, me aleph ad taf. And say, excuse me, it starts with bet. So there is so, all you know, so there's all the aleph words, all the <laughs> aleph that you don't understand. Because aleph is the mystery of God. Which is very interesting, yeah. You see, mm -hmm. it's the mystery mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. And Aleph is a very mysterious letter because, you know, every letter of the Hebrew alphabet mm -hmm. is a consonant. Right. It has a sound. Mm -hmm. You see, so the sound of bet is b, and you have a soft bet, which is v, mm -hmm. and you have a gimel, which is g, and you have a dalet, that is d, etc., etc., etc. But what is the sound of Aleph? E. Uh, no, is, uh, is a vowel already. Yeah, it's, you see, it's like ah, you see, yeah. but, the, but the letter Aleph has no sound. Which brings us to the words of the prophet. Remember when Elijah runs away from Jezebel, mm -hmm. you see, for his life, he runs for his life, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, God speaks to him and says he wants him to go into the wilderness, you know, and then when he comes to the wilderness, He's going to hear this tremendous noise. He says, God is not in the noise. Mm. And then there is going to be explosions and fire. God is not in the fire. And then there is going to be kol dmama daka, the sound of thin silence. Mm. You see, when you, when you read it in English, it doesn't say that because what does it mean? <laughs> what is thin silence? So and what kind of the sound does it yeah. make? Kol. Kol. Dmama. Daka. Daka. You see? So what is that all about? That is precisely the mystery of God. You see? Not only is it silence, but it's a thin silence. You see, it doesn't even fill space. Amazing. And in that, you find everything, mm -hmm. because God is everything. God is the source of everything. I know. When, I mean, you see, like you blew so, me again, it's like, you know, <laughs> just, you can show it and, and, and like, because when you discover that, it's like you discover more who is your God and how he is. Absolutely. And how, 
how you behave yes. and how because you know I'm always amazed like you know Switzerland with the beautiful mountain mm -hmm. and everything and you come here in Israel and they are majestic hills but they are hills and I was saying to a friend one day I said you know like you see this he could have appeared to his people he could have chosen Switzerland like the majest you know but no he's, he's not like that mm -hmm. he chose to come here where you can sense him but he's not mad he doesn't want to show his majesty he wants to be approachable and this is for me is like well that is one thing. part of it but there's another part of it mm -hmm. is that he wanted to he wanted us to confront him mm -hmm. and he wanted to reveal himself without the distraction mm -hmm. of the grandeur of nature and that's one of the things that people don't realize. You know, people speak about uh, the connection between the Jewish people and between God. Mm -hmm. And they say that there is a covenant mm -hmm. between God and the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's not a, a, a contract between mm -hmm. the party of the first part and the party of the second part. It is really a triple chord. It's a triple party. There are three parts to it. There is God, there is Abraham, and there is the land. Very good. Now, how is that possible? Just read your text. The text says that God invites Abraham mm -hmm. to come to the land. And he says, and there I shall make of you a great nation. In other words, if Abraham would have said, Listen, God, you and I are pals, but let me stay in Iraq, where he came from. Or let me go to Egypt. No, God was very angry that he went to Egypt when he did, after he came to this land, to the promised land. And then it got a little bit tough here. And so he said, you know what, I'm going to move south. And in those days, you didn't have the planes. You couldn't go to Miami. So he said, at least I'll go to Cairo. <laughs> and, God nine, said, and, and God said, okay, you think that was such a smart move? Because of this move, your descendants are going to become slaves in Egypt because you created the precedence of going down to Egypt. Oh, no. this is one but thing God will bring you back. Mm. This is something that I realized. So, so there is that three-part contract. Now, Ecclesiastes, you know, which is the book of the wisdom of Solomon, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes makes us aware of this fact of the three-way covenant mm -hmm. when he says in Ecclesiastes, Tovim hashnaim min hayachad. Two are better than one. Because if one is alone and he falls, he can't rise. But if there are two, one helps the other to stand up. But he goes on to say, Vehachut hameshulash lo bimhera yinatek. But the triple cord will not soon be broken. In other words, even a covenant between God and Abraham is fragile and is apt to be broken. And indeed, you know, we, in our sins, the children of Israel, we thinking that our covenant is just a covenant between us and God, we broke that covenant. Mm -hmm. We thought that we could play around. And we didn't realize that the land will not stand if we don't have the other partner, God. Mm -hmm. And the land is going to be diminished and we will be diminished because we will be taken out of that land. So that's the triple cord, mm -hmm. you see? Amazing. And that is the covenant which keeps us strong, which make, makes it possible for us to fulfill God's promise. God promised mankind. Mm -hmm. So your granddad, who, your, your granddad knew that. Yes, because he knew that my grandfather yeah. was privileged to really, with all due 
humility, mm -hmm. he received prophecy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're almost afraid to use that word because, you know, right away everybody says, who are you to talk about prophecy? Mm -hmm. You know, but Eliezer ben Yehuda wrote in his later years, mm -hmm. a partial biography, and he said, I had a vision. What is the word vision? In Hebrew? He wrote it in Hebrew, chazon. Chazon. You see? He said, I had a chazon. And the chazon was an audiovisual mm -hmm. chazon. He saw, he saw himself at the Jordan River, mm -hmm where the children of Israel crossed over into the land of Canaan. Ma'abrot mm hayarden. -hmm. You see, the place where you pass over, la'avor, to pass. Ma'abrot hayarden. And he says, and a voice sounded, bat kol. Mm -hmm. You see, which is that silent voice, that, si that, that sound, no, that sound of, of thin silence. You see, it spoke to him. And it said, Tekumat Yisrael be'artso uvilshuno. And the voice said, the, the, the rebirth, mm -hmm. the reestablishment of Yisrael, which is Jacob, which is, you know, the people, be'artso mm -hmm. in its land, uvilshuno, and in its language. Vilshuno. Mm -hmm. You see? So that is part of the whole thing. And that is what is my mission. Mm -hmm. I go like Demosthenes looking for justice and truth. You know, I go around to open the eyes of the blind and tell people, look and see. There is a great treasure before you. I know. But if you don't take it, you're the loser. Mm -hmm. The treasure always remains a treasure. But you are the poorer if you don't take it. If you, you don't see, see it. Yeah. If you don't so see it and if you don't accept it, if you don't mm -hmm. take it, you see. So what's and the message is universal. Mm -hmm. The message yeah. is good news, mm -hmm. you know, gospel, right? Mevaseret. Exactly. Besorah. Besorah, yeah. You see, Mevaseret is that, that, the one that does the Besorah, you see. But yes, that's mm -hmm. exactly it. Very interesting. So how, because, I mean, like, like uh, for example, looking at Zephaniah, which is this mm -hmm. beautiful uh, passage, which is that God said that he would give back the Hebrew language, because mm -hmm. he gave it at the beginning, mm -hmm. and he says, I'm going to give it back to the people. Uh, somebody, after doing a radio show, wrote to me and said, look, do you know that the verse just before Zephaniah 3.9 mm -hmm. is Zephaniah 3.8. 3, 8. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> and all the letters of the alphabet in mm -hmm. Hebrew are in that verse and it's not in any other verse. Yes. And it's like, again, like our father saying, look, I'm going to tell you something very important. Mm -hmm. And when he told me that, I was like, again, he make my day, you know. Mm -hmm. You receive so let me, let me go back to the beginning mm -hmm. and let me tell you something about the beginning of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the Hebrew scriptures mm -hmm. is the story of creation. Yes. Right? And, you know, God created the world just like all those amateurs who are trying to pretend like they're God and they make magic mm -hmm. and they do it by abracadabra. But you know, abracadabra is actually Hebrew. I heard that it's covered that. And it yeah. is evra kedabra. Let me create as I speak. You see, people don't know that. No. That they are actually, by saying abracadabra, they are... Building? They, no, they are um, oh. uh, affirming God's creation. You see, they are affirming that he did it. You see, but God created the world mm -hmm. by speech. Mm -hmm. God said, let there be light. There was light. God said, let the waters go to certain places and the earth show. It happened. You see, but 
before all that, and the question in Hebrew, which I will not discuss right this minute because I want to give you this other lesson that I have in my mind. Uh, the question is, what is beginning? And how did it begin? And where did it begin? And how much is beginning? We won't talk with that right now. We'll go to the creation itself. The creation, it says, in the beginning the Lord created heaven and earth. Excuse me, heaven and earth. So it was all there already. You see? And in Hebrew it says, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. Mm -hmm. Now, if we wanted to say in the beginning the Lord created heaven and earth, actually we should have said Bereshit bara Adonai shamayim va'aretz. Mm -hmm. Without et. Mm -hmm. You see, et is the definite article of the object of a verb, for those of us who are grammarians. But basically what it means is it's definite. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, et is a word which is not part of the language at all. It just comes there to kind of bind things together. But the scholars of text said, no, 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 it's a word. It tells us a lesson, otherwise it wouldn't be there. Hebrew in the scriptures is a brief tongue. Mm -hmm. It tries to write the story with as few characters as possible. And so it says et. What is et? Aleph, the first letter of the alphabet, mm -hmm. and taf, the last letter of the alphabet. In the beginning, the Lord Creator created Alpha Omega. Mm -hmm. Et. He created beginning to end. Everything was created in the first day. In the first moment, in the first instant of creation. You see? But how was it created? By speech. And speech is words. And words are remembered by scribing, by putting them down. And so God created with the tool of writing which in Hebrew is made up of 22 consonants, right? Mm -hmm. But if you will look in the first chapter mm -hmm. and in the beginning of the second chapter where we read about Shabbat, how many letters do you think we find? 20. 21. Ah. There is one letter missing. Mm -hmm. Very strange. First, why is one letter missing? Second, what is the letter that's missing? And third, why is that letter missing? So if you would go and you would separate them and put them all in order like you have in your book, you see, you would find that the letter which is missing is the letter Samech. Samech. Samech, okay. the one that's round, mm -hmm. you see. The first place it appears is in the story of the garden that the Lord planted mm -hmm. east of Eden, mm -hmm. right? And he says that this garden was bound by the rivers. Okay. And it says the first river is the river which encircled, encircled, the word is sovev, mm -hmm. sovev, and to encircle, the letter is samech, which is also round, mm -hmm. sovev. So now we know, okay, the letter that's missing is the letter samech. The letter samech is the letter which comes in on circulating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why is that letter not in the story of creation, wasn't, wasn't that necessary for creation? No. In Hebrew, we have two letters that have the sound S. Mm -hmm. One is Samech and the other one is Sin, yes. which is like Shin but without the H. Mm -hmm. Get the H out, they say. <laughs> so, the sound is there but not the letter. Mm -hmm. Why? Because creation is the beginning of a journey. And the beginning of a journey has to be straight. 
you see? And the, the straight path in Hebrew is called Derech Hayashar, mm -hmm. the straight path. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. In Judaism, circles are also important. Mm -hmm. And you know that in uh, Psalms, uh, we hear he, he leads me in, um, uh, cir uh, in circles of justice. Tzedek. Justice is circular, but God's plan is straight and not circular. So when God created the world and he created it, you see, there is no Samach in it. This is just wonderful. You see how this is just amazing. Um, you know, this is just the beginning of why we're discovering so many things with the Hebrew language. And, but the thing that is amazing is that we are discovering God in the midst of all of that. It's, it's, not, it's not just intellectual, it's using our intellect and, and his support of the letters to be able to know him better. So, dear friends, We'll carry on again to do some other program with Eliezer. Eliezer, thank you again for coming and giving all these nuggets to all of us. It's wonderful. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And I send blessings from Jerusalem to all Amen. your listeners and Amen. all your viewers. Amen. And continue with your search. Yes, it's wonderful. Don't forget, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy to use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter. Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you in two weeks, same time, same station, for the next program from In The Last Days. In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In The Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friends. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to the program in the last days. And today we have Eliezer Ben Yehuda again. It's a dear friend and we're walking step by step to see what's happening in the scriptures. And we will speak also about my book, which is about the beauty of the Hebrew language. So Eliezer, shalom again. Shalom, how are shalom. you? Fine, thank so you. So nice to be with all of your listeners yes. and with you and to share with you the common faith that we have in our Father, Amen. and especially in His place yes. in, in Jerusalem. It's, yes, it's wonderful to be able to be here and with you. And like now we've been here for, we're in our third year, and we've learned so much being in the land. There is no other place really to learn things. And we're rediscovering the scriptures, and we're discovering the Hebrew language, and we're discovering Him because of all of that. Absolutely. And I was saying uh, we have more questions in one way, but we are stronger in our faith in the other side, which is wonderful. And you wonderful. have some answers and I have some that you answers. didn't have yes. before. Yes. So very this is the wonderful thing. Yes. And I'm very happy to see that happening. Mm -hmm. And I am, you know, from my place as a, a Jewish person, as a rabbi in Judaism, I firmly believe that we belong to one faith community, the Judeo-Christian uh, faith community, and that we need to uh, celebrate what we have. Uh, God speaks to him and says he wants him to go into the wilderness, you know, and then when he comes to the wilderness, he's going to hear this tremendous noise. He says, God is not in the noise. Mm. 
and then there is going to be explosions and fire. God is not in the fire. And then there is going to be kol dmama daka, the sound of thin silence. Mm. You see, when you, when you read it in English, it doesn't say that because what does it mean? The t- what is thin silence? So kol, and what kind of the sound does it yeah. make? Kol, kol dmama daka. daka. You see? So what is that all about? That is precisely the mystery of God. You see? Not only is it silence, but it's a thin silence. You see, it doesn't even fill space. Amazing. And in that, you find everything. Because God is everything. God is the source of everything. I don't know. When, I mean, you like you blew so, me again, it's like, you know, <laughs> just, you can show it and, and, and like, because when you discover that, it's like you discover more who is your God and how he is absolutely. and how, how he behave yes. and how, because, you know, I'm always amazed, like, you know, Switzerland with the beautiful mountain mm-hmm. and everything. And you come here in Israel and they are majestic hills, but they are hills. And I was saying to a friend one day, I said, you know, like you see this, he could have appeared to his people. He could have chosen Switzerland, like the majesty, you know. But no, he's he's not like that. Mm -hmm. He chose to come here where you can sense him. Mm. Of uh, what the Hebrew scriptures are, uh, they should try to uh, take a shower uh, wearing a... uh, um, a raincoat, oh, yeah. a raincoat, mm-hmm. you know, they're not going to get too wet. No. They'll get uncomfortable, but they're not going to get too wet and they're certainly not going to get clean. Mm-hmm. You see, so if you want to learn the roots of Christianity, the roots of Christianity are found in the Hebrew scriptures. And this is very true because friends, I start to read slowly, slowly my Hebrew my, my uh, Tenach, the, the Hebrew scriptures, in Hebrew, obviously, and is another book, is another Absolutely. book, is another book, yes. and it goes to your face straight, mm-hmm. yes. and, and a lot, I don't know what, and if we can put it under anti-Semitism, but there is a lot of things that suddenly I realize and say, this is not the connection is not what was written in my Old Testament mm-hmm. in, in English or in French. I can't remember now, I read usually in English. And when I read it in Hebrew and I have the two together and I go like slowly, slowly, it's like, this is not the same. And, and it's so important that we relearn this thing. And we, we have lots of work to do and a lot of studies and, yes. you yes. know, relearn and learn and relearn mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Now, it's very interesting that you, in your book, you know, you speak not only about the letters mm-hmm. and the name of the letters, mm-hmm. but also the, um, the numerical value of the, mm-hmm. uh, of the uh, letters. Okay, the and you mentioned the fact that, uh, that the Aleph, the mm-hmm. first letter of the alphabet, uh, you know, is the letter that has the value of one, mm-hmm. and it is the first letter of the word El, Mm -hmm. or Elohim, Mm -hmm. or even Adonai, which means the Lord in Hebrew. You see, Mm -hmm. it's usually translated that Mm -hmm. way, you know. And uh, uh, the last letter, you know, Alpha Omega, Mm -hmm. we have in Hebrew Aleph and Mm Taf. So we always say, just like the Greek said, from Alpha um, Alpha Omega means, you know, from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. So... Me Aleph Ad Taf, from Aleph to Taf, means to know everything. Mm-hmm. And one of the arguments in the Hebrew mm-hmm. is that you can never know everything. Very Me Aleph true. Ad Taf. <laughs> it Very is, true. No matter what a wonderful student you are, you will never know everything. Me Aleph Ad Taf. And so they say that the Hebrew scriptures begin with the second letter of the alphabet. Bet, Bet, Bereshit. Mm -hmm. Why does it begin with a bet? 
so that nobody can say, oh, I know the scriptures, me aleph ad taf. You say, excuse me, it starts with bet. So there is so, all you know, so there's all the aleph words, all the aleph that you don't understand. Because aleph is the mystery of God. Which is very interesting, yeah. You see, it's mm -hmm. the mystery of God. Mm -hmm. And aleph is a very mysterious letter because, you know, every letter of the Hebrew alphabet mm -hmm. is a consonant. Right. It has a sound. Mm -hmm. You see, so the sound of bet is b, and you have a soft bet which is v, mm -hmm. and you have a gimel which is g, and you have dalet that is d, etc., etc., etc. But what is the sound of aleph? E, uh, no, e <laughs> is, uh, is a vowel already. Yeah, it's, you see, it's like ah, you see, yeah. but the but the letter aleph has no sound, which brings us to the words of the prophet. Remember when Elijah runs away from Jezebel, mm -hmm. you see, for his life, he runs for his life, you know, yes, yes. together mm -hmm. and uh, keep to ourselves what we have that is uniquely ours, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. Yes, wonderful. So tell us a bit more, I mean, like we, I've told you about the book that I wrote, and I think, I, I pray that it will be like a, introduction for people. So tell me a bit what you think about it. Well, I read your book. I was very happy that you sent it to me so that I could read it. And I read it and uh, I told you before we went on air mm -hmm. that it's a lovely book and that I was very pleased to uh, receive it and to read it. But I think that you have opened a window mm -hmm. for Christian people to see a blink of an eye mm -hmm. of what Hebrew is. And at the same time, I think that it is very important for Jewish people and for Christian people mm -hmm. to learn what I call the Hebrew scriptures in the Hebrew. You know, a classical book whether you're talking about Shakespeare, whether you're talking about Molière, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about Chekhov, mm -hmm. or whether you're talking about Tanakh, which is our name for our Hebrew scriptures, mm -hmm. Torah, Nevi'im, Ketubim. That's it. The five books of Moses, mm -hmm. the books of the prophets, mm -hmm. and the writings. That's it. So, that's so these Tanakh. three, the initials of the three words, mm -hmm make up the word Tanakh. And so we called it the Tanakh, or in English, I call it the Hebrew Scriptures. And anybody who thinks that they can read a translation and get the full meaning 